So in the beginning, Sudan is mostly desert, and desert can look very boring if you don't know what you should look for. But as soon as you know something about the country, you see much more. It's a fantastic country in terms of archaeological sites, but for the logistics, there is very little you can depend on. Sudan is one of those places where you don't go to unless you can work with somebody who really knows what he's doing. And at this very moment, I have a research associate in the museum who's an expert on Sudan. So in 2011, we got funding from Niarcos to um, go to Sudan and do an overview of animal representations for the Meroe Kingdom. So um, Meroe is a an independent kingdom of Nubia, located mostly in north of Sudan and a bit of uh, in south of Egypt also. It's a kingdom that developed during late antiquity, uh, which means that it was contemporaneous with uh, the Roman and before that the Greek domination on the Mediterranean world, including Egypt. It has been defined in the past as a corridor between uh, the Mediterranean world and the rest of the African continent. And I think it's still a very good definition. During the Niarcos expedition in 2011, we hit the road for about two weeks and 2,000 kilometers. And we visited about 20 different sites in these two weeks. We started in Khartoum and from there on we went north, uh, towards the Egyptian border, uh, all along the Nile, visiting for us the most important archaeological sites. The main reason for our trip was to photograph animal representation and the result could be a bestiary. And a bestiary is an overview of all the animal representations these people were using in their own visual world. And then you can compare that. For instance, it is interesting to find animals that have a different role in the Marriott Kingdom from what we find in Egypt. In Egypt, uh, the ram is connected to the image of the god Amun, which is one of the most important gods in the Egyptian pantheon, but is also uh, part of the Meroitic pantheon as one of the main uh, holy figures and is represented exactly in the same ways. But if I take another animal such as uh, the frog, again in Egypt you will find a goddess called Heket and we know it's a fertility goddess, but in Meroe, you have frog images, but you also have statues of frogs. And I'm not talking about a human representation with the head of a frog, but simply a really naturalistic frog. And we know in that case that it is another completely new and original god. When it comes to Meroe, archaeology is the main tool uh, that we have at our disposal to understand the state, the religion, to understand the way people were seeing things, doing things, uh, because we don't have uh, original sources. We also took on our expedition a paleontologist, Will Harcourt Smith, and a paleontologist could help us with yet another dimension, our general knowledge of animals in antiquity, or way before, was lacking. Anything we would do in Sudan would be new and would add immediately to our understanding of that region. And since it was related to animals, and animals was part of our, our, our research there, we thought it was appropriate at least to advance that part of it. In the short term, we were able to write a small but very useful paper on the paleontology. The opportunity to visit all these places could lead to other things. So for instance, we saw in a few places games, uh, games carved in rock. This was not the purpose of our particular expedition, but the expedition gave us access suddenly so that we could document that in at least three or four places. We were able to identify a few games, nothing to do with the Marriott Kingdom, much later probably Ottoman. There were a lot of Ottoman soldiers in that area that were just passing their time and carving their games in rock, which actually Ottoman soldiers are known for elsewhere. So the expedition is very important because it, it brings very different categories of people and researchers in the same place. We know that many sites have still uh, a lot of potential to work. And if you don't do a general survey, uh, such as the Niarcos uh, expedition, I'm afraid that in the near future, you won't be able to gather as much documentation as we do now. There's one other reason to be thrilled about this expedition, for us in particular. The United States is a country that has one of the richest collections of 
the Merida Kingdom. But there are very few experts left. So to do an expedition like this actually puts some expertise now together with the museum collections. The expedition led to more results than we scheduled. Uh, it led to a lot of things that are very valuable, both for now, but also for future attempts in that direction.